In order to commemorate the latest leg of his royal insulting tour, Prince Harry downed tequila shots with Stephen Colbert, who teased their upcoming interview while ruthlessly mocking him. What did Colbert say about Harry? How did Harry react to this? Watch the video as we show you the shocking interview. While filming his interview for The Late Show at the Ed Sullivan Theater in Manhattan, the 38-year-old exiled prince was seen receiving the shots with salt and lime. Harry, whose autobiography Spare describes his binge drinking and drug use, was seen smiling as the 58-year-old presenter offered the beverages. The Daily Mail was informed by studio visitors that Harry downed the shots after participating in a quiz and answering absurd questions on his favorite sandwich and smartphone app. Photos also show the prince being carefully protected by armed guards. The prince has been accused of endangering his life by boasting about killing 25 Taliban soldiers while serving with the UK military. Colbert teased the interview on his show that night, then immediately mocked his upcoming guest, saying that Spare was also available on audiobook and a commemorative plate. I've read the book and it's really good, really emotional, really revealing. I'm going to have so much to discuss with his hairiness about the widely leaked book. Then he disregarded one of Harry's many concerns about William, his brother and heir, saying that it was straight out of the bigger brother sibling playbook for William to try to neglect Harry at school. Spare, Prince Harry's autobiography, is equal parts confession, tirade, and love letter. It seems like the longest angry, inebriated text message ever sent. It's the view from inside the unending Truman Show and surreal fishbow, as he describes it. It's disarmingly frank and intimate showing the sheer weirdness of his often isolated life, and rather than the dramatic events, it's the simple things that show how little we actually knew. There are hints of him when he was a royal stoner, smoking a joint after dinner and fearing the Duke of Kent, his elderly neighbor, might breathe in the smoke. What other royal story includes losing his virginity behind a pub? He was also keenly cognizant of girls with throne syndrome, who would be visibly equipping herself with a crown the instant she shook his hand. There is the tale of how, while watching Brian May perform on the roof of Buckingham Palace at the Golden Jubilee event, he noticed his grandmother, Queen Elizabeth, was donning earplugs. Although his life in London before Meghan was apparently lavish, it also seemed as though he was living a double life. Harry experienced terrible panic attacks, which are terrible for anybody to experience but are more crippling for someone who must speak and appear in public. He talks about how he self-medicates with psychedelic substances to deal with his loneliness at home, dries his clothing on a radiator, and plans his shopping trips like military raids to be carried out quickly and in disguise. The ghost-written book is a fast-paced, quick-fire account that is written from the inside while the author is constantly scratchily aware of the bodyguards at the door and the waiting cameras. He observes the cops outside as a kid smoking marijuana with his friends as they are being watched. The tragic event that seems to have altered the remainder of his life, the death of his mother, Princess Diana, lies at the heart of this tale and permeates nearly every page. He loved her unconditionally, and all of their other worries are spokes on a wheel that are connected by an overwhelming sense of unresolved pain. He hates the press, blaming them for chasing his mother so relentlessly, including in the events leading to her death in Paris, with Harry returning obsessively to the scene of the car accident. The arguments with his brother Prince William are sometimes framed by allusions to their prior attachment to their mother. His crippling anxiety and self-destructiveness also appear to be results of his mother's passing, which removed an emotional anchor he had never replaced before meeting Meghan. Well, that's heartbreaking, Colbert said with mock angst after playing a clip of Harry saying how hurt he'd been by the decades-old slight that he took personally. I mean, to be rejected by his older brother at school, even though that magic hat sorted them into the same house. Colbert commented, pretending the royal brothers were part of Harry Potter. What do you think? Hufflepuff? Hufflepuff? Gryffindor? I'm not sure. He quipped, naming houses from the J.K. Rowling series. So, do you think what Stephen Colbert did was funny or rude? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.